What's going on, you glorious bastards? My name is Fox Soul, and welcome back to another video here in Lords of the Fallen. Now, I would like to actually go ahead and create this video based upon what I like to say the pros and cons of Lords of the Fallen. And in all honesty, this game is got its strong points and it's got a lot of weak points. And I like to actually cater through to both sides because I think a lot of people may consider that, oh, you know, you only you you're the type of person that hates on this game all the time. And it's not that I hate on this game. It's that the fact that this the fact of it is is that the game has a lot of good thing uh, good elements about it. But at the same point in time, this game also has a lot of negativity to it as well that actually kind of frustrates me. It frustrates me to a, a belief that, you know, it could be better. This is a game that I really do enjoy playing at times, and I get really frustrated playing at times. And it's like any Souls game. That's just what it is. So, without further ado, let's just actually talk about the pros and the cons. And I kind of want to hit more of the pros real quick before we hit into the cons. So, one good thing about this game that I could tell you is, is that this is a good game with very fast combat and it's very easy to learn. Like, I think that this game is legitimately one of the best beginning Souls games that you could ever play. So, basically, that's two pros right there and all off bat. This game... When this game came out, before this game came out, I've played Dark Souls. I was playing Sekiro. I was playing Lies of P before this game came out. And it, from Lies of P to Lords of the Fall, it was a night and day transition, especially in terms of combat. The combat in this game feels very fluent. The combat in this game, the controls, everything feels really, really solid, really good. Majority of the time. Now, it wasn't like that when it first came out, but since it's updates and everything, it's really good i have to give credit there because going back to lies of p and coming to this game lies of p feels clunky it really feels like like a clunk souls game the dodge in this game feels really good the combat the way the weapons are used is very fluent now granted there's lack of animation with some of these weapons there's lack of identity with some of these weapons but you have to give credit that honestly in this game the combat really does feel good now, with that said, this game is also a good co-op experience, in my personal opinion. Like, this game, me and my friend Val, we we ran this game when it first came out, day one. And we played it, I live-streamed it, and we were having a good old ball. It's the first Souls game that, from beginning to end, you and a friend can actually play this. Now, grant you, there's some network issues, and we all know that, with the rubber banding going on, and, you know... As a co-op person, your hits may not, in your in the hostess world, connect properly. But it's it was still a good ex experience. Me and my friend Valk, we ran the game, we beat the game. We got to see both the Lord's ending and the Radiant ending first and foremost before I went to do the Umbral ending and I took off my own and he stopped playing the game. But it was a great experience running together when the first game came out. Two friends who's played Soul games. It was something that we've all asked for. It's like I want to play a Souls game with my friend from beginning in. This is, this is a good, this is a good one. This is why I said this is a good beginner Soul game for people. And I would totally recommend it for anybody who wants to get in, especially if you got a friend who wants to get into this game. This is a good game to get into with them. Um, it has a great concept, especially with the idea of, you know, mixing two worlds together, the the living world and the demon world, I like to call it, your umbral world, the idea of using your lantern to go to travel in between both of them to go through, like, example right here, going through a gate. Great concept. Very good concept, in my personal opinion. Um... There's a variety of different builds you can build in this game. You don't have to be just a strength build. The magic is actually really good. Um, there's variety in it. You could do a poison build. You could do a weapon build. There's different things you can do. It's up to you. Just don't... The only thing I would say is don't think that you're going to get a whole, whole slew of variety in the game. But it's very decent. It's very good for what it is. 
The game is very, very speedrunner friendly in my personal opinion. That is a pro to me. I don't think I've ever really seen a Souls game that is quite like that. That's quite speedrunner friendly. Uh, the game is actually technically very small and linear. So at that point in time, progression in this game, you shouldn't get lost if you're a new player in this game. It is very good. It's, the exploration in this game is not that vast. It's not as open world as Elden Ring where you can really get lost in the game. Once you understand basically your areas and you get through it, it's a cakewalk. Now... Let's go with the cons in this. Well, before we go now, let's go with one more. Uh, let's go with one more pro real quick. And that is the, the devs consistency of trying to update and improve this game. That right there is a con and a pro at the same time. But we're going to talk about the pro methods. It does have support from the devs. The devs do tend to listen to people, even though I consider they're listening to the wrong people. They do seem to listen and want to improve and make the game better and better. They've been working on performance issues. When this game first came out, the performance of this game was so fucking bad. Like, I had a 4090 I was running this game on, and I was barely able to get 40 frames per second on it. Since then, now I get 60 frames per second on, on a 4090. I ended up buying the PS5 version and there was areas that was like Blight Town all over again in Dark Souls and it felt clunky when it first came out. But since updates and everything else, the game has became better. But the going into cons, we could talk about the cons in that real quick, because in all honesty, there's some cons there. And what I'm going to get at when it comes to the cons is the fact that with the updates in general, the problem is, is that this game does have weekly updates. To some people, that's not a big deal, but it can be. It honestly can be a big deal because you're not given the chance for the game to breathe. With all the balancing updates that they're doing, they're not just working with the updates on performance issues. They're working on balancing issues. They're working on different things in that regard. That's fine. But at the same point in time, it's the game starting to lose its identity in one regards. But before we get to that, let's talk about like the balancing. My issue with the weekly updates on this game is that is the problem is, is that, OK, my build worked last week. My build don't work no more this week because, oh, it's deemed OP or such. I don't have a chance to really look through things until the next change. And. To some people, I think that's actually could be considered a problem. That could be considered a true con. Is that if you keep constantly updating your game, instead of, you know, a once a month update or, you know, bi-weekly update, give the game a chance to breathe. Take a look at the feedback from the players. A week is not long, it's not a long time at all for people to actually take a look at what's going on, to see if something's broken, to see if something's working better. You know, to see what they can do with the game. I know some people who actually just dropped the game because, okay, well, my build worked last week. This week I built a new build that works and now it doesn't work no more. Uh, uh, now my old build's working now. What the hell's going on? They dropped it because it's complete inconsistency. And, I, it, and that right there can frustrate people quite a bit. And I'm just saying, like, Let's tone down on the updates. Let's work more on the performance issues. Let's let the balancing work itself. You know, let's let's do a balance patch. Let's let it ride for a couple of weeks. Let's see how it works. And then let's take the feedback from that and say, okay, well, this needs to be nerfed. This needs to be fixed from actual player involvement, not fucking Reddit. Okay, if Reddit is your new fork of 4chan, we all know this. And if you're going to keep listening to people on Reddit, then you're going to, you're not going to have a good, good time on this game. Sorry, my Reddit people, but you know what I'm talking about. There's only very good Reddit people. Nine out of ten times, y'all drama stirrers. And we don't need drama stirrers. We need people who actually play the game, who aren't trolls, that want to legitimately make the game better. So, that's right there's a con. And because of that, especially with the updates, the game's lacking its identity. The game, when it first came out, I thought the identity of this game was... A harder version of Dark Souls. Like this is going to be your 
hard Dark Souls. This game is so fucking hard that it's going to bust my balls. And it did. The enemy density, everything else that was going on with the game. Stuff that in the vanilla version of this game was, to me, was what set it apart from your traditional Dark Souls game. I thought that was really great. Apparently, people disagreed and, you know, they made, they complained. Devs decided to change the density. They decided to change different things in the game, which keeps nerfing it here, nerfing it there, buffing this, buffing that, which, in all honesty, now the game has a really weird identity. Is it catering to casuals or is it catering to, you know, traditional soul players? What is the game? What is this game's demographic? What is the catering to? What are we... What? Who is supposed to be playing this game? Because artificial difficulty, you know, once you figure it out, it ain't that, it ain't, it ain't that good, okay? I'm telling you. My biggest problem is the artificial difficulty in this game after it gets a new game plus fucking one. It's too much. Uh, another con in this game is going into new game plus one and higher levels. It becomes more of a chore than it is fun. And not in the terms of, you know, removing the vestiges. The vestiges removal is fine. I think, honestly, that was one of the key points that I fucking fell in love with. Is that when you go into the next game, you're making this game ten times harder by making it to where you have to run from air to air. You can't just teleport. You have to use your seedlings sparingly. Well... They took that out because people complain about it, apparently. And it is what it is, but it's still, you know, again, another part of the identity removal. But with New Game Plus One, you got the problem now to where bosses' lifespans, their health bars have just basically tripled in most cases, even seven times. Instead of gradually growing, it's just... New game plus one, new game plus two. It's getting an extra 15% here, another 15% here, another 15% there. But originally, but but don't worry, we're going to add an extra 50% on top of that. And it's artificial inflation. There's no true behavioral updates. I'm going to tell you that right now. That is a big con. The endings in this game is another con, in my personal opinion. Um, basically, you got three flavor endings you have your banana you have your strawberry and you have your blueberry but the problem here is they all taste like a bland vanilla fucking flavor each ending basically in its own regards oh yeah yeah does not really feel good to go through with they're either a chore like for the umbro ending it could be considered a complete chore with its quest line if you don't if you don't understand what to do or how it works um a deer's fucking ending, the radiant ending, the final boss fight there is complete garbage. Everybody, I think we can all agree upon that one. Um, when it comes to, I don't know, the uh, the Lord's ending, basically you need to call Chris Hansen on this one, people, because that ending you be, is supposed to be the evil ending, and you're basically shoving a big-ass man-god into a little girl. whoop they do Oh, another con, because I have a list right here. Another con in this game to go ahead and discuss real quick, guys, would be the character customization. It sucks really bad. It's very limited in what you can actually design as a character compared to any other Soul-like game that has character customization. The character customization in here, basically, again, it's another flavored version of uh, Souls, uh, of, uh, of the endings. Basically, what do you want to create? You want to create an old man, young man, young man, uh, middle-aged man with, you know, very limited beards, very limited customization. Same for the chicks. Like, it's it's really bad. The customization in here is really bad. You, you can't really do much. I can't really make an ugly-ass fucking character like I wanted to. But I'm going to leave it with that, I think, because in all honesty... You tell me your opinions. You give me some pros. You give me some cons in the comments below because this is what I'm touching on. I'm touching really that the game in general is a very decent beginner souls game. This isn't 
what I don't, I think the actual developers are intended for. But then again, I don't know what the fuck the developers intended because they changed the identity of this game so fucking much that I'm just going to tell you that this is, in my personal preference, if I've had a friend who never played Dark Souls before in their life, this would be the game that I would introduce them to. This would get them started into the Soul game series. And I'd be like, this is Baby Souls. Once you finish Baby Souls, we'll get you into Real Souls. Because... Is just what it is. There's no uniqueness anymore about this game. It's very easy. It's what it is. There's performance issues here. There's performance issues there a little bit, but they are working on that with the weekly updates. But it is what it is. And I don't know what it means, but you guys have it easy. You take it, you take a good one, and I will catch you on the flip side. And Currently, I am working on our member list because apparently we have now over 72 fucking members now on this channel for some fucking regards. And I appreciate every single one of y'all guys. So I will be updating the members list coming here in the near future. Um, I got to figure out how we're going to incorporate all y'all and make sure you all get your shout outs. So please bear with me that this video does not have you in there. Uh, maybe the next one will not either, but we're going to fix that. I promise. Until next time, take it easy, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.